Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Jen and Christian's with me and we're here, we got tagged! I'm surprised too, but we did, we got tagged! And this tag has a awesome, this has, and we got tagged and this tag has an awesome title, it is called the fucking monster tag! Woohoo! Fucking monsters man! Woo! Question one, which monster has the biggest dick? No, that's not the first question. <laughs> Answer that in the comments. Which monster do you think would have the biggest dick? Probably Let's... Michael Myers. <laughs> He's a human monster, so that doesn't count. We could get into a whole theological debate. I know. About I'm going to go with the xenomorph because its entire head is a giant dick. Quite, this was brought to we were tagged in this tag was created by Solus Trenchcoat. His channel will be in the description. Real awesome good dude. channel, cool dude. And there are a lot of questions, so we are not going to fuck around in this fucking monster tag. See what I did there? What what so, is yeah. your favorite monster movie of all time? <laughs> it's Sleepwalkers. I asked Sparky if this would count because it's where incestuous werewolf vampire cats. I'm Wear pretty, cat pyres for short. Wear cat pyres for short. I asked Sparky. I'm not being funny, guys. I fucking love sleepwalkers. Don't I fucking love sleepwalkers? She loves sleepwalkers. I There's do. There's a poster for it right up there. When I did the review, it was one of our earlier reviews. Um, when, when when we talk about the incest, I was so proud because I, well, Sparky did it, but it was my idea of inserting Marvin Gaye, let's get it on, during their sex scene between mother and son. I was so proud of myself. I thought I was very smart there. It was classic. Um, they're very cool and they can they can change into anything. Why they're such a cool, um, you know, uh, monster is because they can take a form of anything. They can go invisible. They have sex with their, you know, with their offspring. They for some reason have the ability to change cars. Yeah. Yeah, very, very well, cool. midway through driving them, it makes no sense. Yeah, and it has, uh, this isn't a monster thing, but it has the fuck, it has awesome cameos by Toby Hooper. No one ever remembers that. And Stephen King and Clive Barker. It's like, oh my God. And Ron Perlman gets stabbed in the back by an ear of corn. And cats save the day. Yes. Pussy saves the day. Yeah. What more could you want? Yeah. What about you? Uh, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, Trenchy mentioned Nightbreed, which is a very which is a big personal favorite of mine and honorable mention, but I gotta go with John Carpenter's The Thing. Because it's John Carpenter's The Thing. It's so damn good. It's a, one of the very few flawless movies in my opinion. Sleepwalkers is a flawless movie. Sure it is. <laughs> it is. It's. Uh, does it have incest? Does it have invisibility? Does it have... Well, technically it does. <laughs> it has a dog split, head splitting open. I'll talk more about the thing for a later question. So, cool. Yeah. But the thing. Cool. What's, What's your favorite type of monster? What's my favorite type of monster? Okay, I'm going to have to go with two answers here because I, I, I know yeah, what you mean, Trenchy, but I also have to like uh, talk about something. But my but the answer for this tag would definitely probably be werewolves. Um, uh, you got Some of you guys might know, some of you guys might not. I have a thing for just wolves in general. They're like my, I know this sounds really, you know, cliche and like, you know, dumb, but I really have a connection to wolves. I think they're very spiritual animals. So it makes, it kind of makes sense that I'm like really into werewolves. There's just something awesome about them. Werewolves are just fucking awesome. Um, my first uh, horror movie that I ever saw was American Werewolf in London. So that might have something to do with it too, but they're the best monsters of all the monsters. I also have a thing and you can ask Sparky. I have a big thing with the moon mm -hmm. and that kind of has a correlation. So I guess it makes sense. Like I, I will go no matter what kind of weather. I will drag his ass out there and take and just jerk off to the moon and taking all kinds of pictures. It's amazing. So yeah, I really do that. Um, but the other monster that I like, and this isn't, I can. Uh, this probably doesn't count because it is the human monsters. And what I mean by that is the monsters. The movies that I find the most compelling about when we're doing with monsters are our human monsters that are wearing a mask. Um, the movies like The Woman is one that you can take where he presents himself one way and his family. He is a complete and utter monster. The Nightingale has a monster like that where they where they have or or even or even like a movie like Found where there is actually some decent. There's some good things in this person, but he's so fucked up he does become a monster uh these are movies that i just find fascinating and i think they're the scariest monsters of all could and you I say the real monster is mine 
Well, I, that, <laughs> that's basically, uh, Christian called me out. I mean, that's basically, and I know that sounds like such a tool, generic answer, but I really believe that. And I and I find myself, the movies that I really, really get into and that, that really make me think and chew on it and stuff, even Midsummer to a point, because the boyfriend, and that's another good monster, because he's he's not exactly a monster, but he kind of is. And those those duality, duality characters really fascinate me. But, the, I, but I'm talking about the really super evil monsters. The Poughkeepsie Tapes is another good monster. Yeah. Um, the human monster. So yes, I, I know the Christian did call me out on it, and he's right. But yeah, I think the scariest monster is the monsters who hide, who 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 wear masks, and you might not know that they're wearing a mask until it's too late. That that fascinates me both in real life and in movies. So those are my two. So yeah, Dumb Jen is going with werewolves and a uh, man. I like werewolves. Werewolves are pretty. Cool. Who's the real monster? You need a you need a you need a pipe. Cannibal Holocaust kids. Cannibal uh, Holocaust. Cannibal what Holocaust. cannibals be considered monsters? They're just cannibals. Oh. Um, uh, werewolves for me. I love me a good werewolf movie. Yeah. We, we, I, I, haven't, I haven't had a really, really good werewolf movie in a while since, like, Late Phases was the last really good werewolf movie we've had. We need a new... What another. about Wolf Cop? Well, Wolf Cop was is really good, but that came out before uh, became it came up before Late Phases. So. Oh, I thought it was the other way. Around. Nope, Late okay. Phases came out after Wolf Cop. What's the next question? What was the first monster movie you saw that scared you? Because I fucking am terrified of snakes. Oh my god, that movie fucked me up as a kid. I was like, ah! I like literally was checking things to make sure there wasn't one of those creepy bastards, slithering bastards anywhere in. Fucking cobras, man! Fucking cobras! Yeah, you know, I just felt, you know, this thought just dawned on me for some reason, because this is how my brain work, works. Would can be considered the first torture porn movie? For Janet was, oh, this is totally unrelated, but this is a perfect segue. You know, I found an article where there was an actual motherfucking snake on a motherfucking plane. Somebody took pictures. There was a fucking, I think it was like a, I don't know what it was, but it was up in there and it was all coiled and, ah! Cool. Because fucking flying and fucking snakes, that's my idea of hell. But yes, the first movie that ever fucked me up, I'm trying to stay, you know, on on the pony, Um, would be the, would be Oh my god! And any snake movie but after that, too, even fucking Anaconda, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. That's sparky. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's kind of a twofold thing. Like I, like I said earlier, the thing, and I've told this story plenty times, but basically, young six-year-old <laughs> Christian sitting, uh, sitting on the couch watching fucking John Carpenter's thing on like HBO or Cinemax, one of those fucking stations thing. Oh, that's, it's pretty cool. It's like that old movie I like, the TCM place. But it's new, and then the fucking dog's head splits open, and I freak the fuck out, and it was glorious. Um, but the other, but that movie doesn't scare me anymore. I just love that movie. Um, but I just equate that movie to being one of the big reasons why I'm such a big horror fan. Um, but the movie that does still fucking scare me. Oh wait, and... wait! Disclaimer here. This is where he's gonna out me as like the worst mother in the world. Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the movie that still fucks me up to this day is. Fucking arachnophobia. I honestly did not think it I was, was fucking five. You had seen other stuff and it was yeah, just Yeah, but fuck that. <laughs> fucking arachnophobia is give is what is give I chop up to the reason why I'm still freaked out by spiders. He I, literally has to look in his shoes. Yes, because that one scene <laughs> fucked me up. <laughs> It's funny. One of these days we're gonna do arachnophobia for the channel. Yeah, It'll we'll be have fun. To eventually. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't think it would scare him because you know he'd watched Universal movies and stuff, and he liked creature features, and I thought. Oh, Tarantula didn't scare me for some, but for some reason arachnophobia did. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why either, but I'm the worst mother in the world because that's the out of every movie when he was younger that I let him watch, that was the one that oh, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have let him watch that. Yeah, who would have thought? Number four, what's your favorite giant animal monster movie? A giant animal monster, that would be. You know what? I was gonna say one, but I think I'm gonna go with another one because it's just the gross factor in the ew ticks. Ticks is great. I ticks. love Ticks. Yeah, Ticks. I'm gonna go with Ticks. That that movie, I didn't. I really liked it, but I liked, you know, kind of fucked up shit like that. I remember your grandmother saw that real late one night, and she was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh!" Like she literally, she because she asked me, "Is it good?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Fine. Ticks is awesome. Ticks is very underappreciated." Fucked your grandmother up. <laughs> 
Yeah. What about you? Um, god damn. I, kind of like you. I was gonna say Lake Placid, but now I really want to talk about another giant insect movie. The Nest. The yeah. giant roach movie. That's the one that really fucked up your grandmother. <laughs> the fucking nest is so good. It's it's basic. It's uh, it's based off a book actually. Uh, the basic premise is just this town gets overrun by a nest of roaches and their giant queen cockroach thing. <laughs> it's fucking cool. It's notorious for the poster having a woman being raped by a giant cockroach. That and uh, that's how I first saw. It. I was like, oh, that looks like cool. I need to watch this movie. It is an awesome movie. <laughs> oh, nest. The nest is awesome. I love the nest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're very good movie. Uh, uh, do you think the Cabin in the Woods is the best monster film ever, or do you think not? No. I'm sorry. I, anyone out there who loves the movie, no disrespect, but I've never gotten why that movie. I mean, it's perfectly fine, but it's one of those movies where I sit back and I, because I, I know a lot of people love it, and again, I'm not being an asshole or disrespectful. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure I'm the only one that's going to say Sleepwalkers, mm -hmm. um, but it's just, I've never gotten why. Why? I don't know. I like I like Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods is fine. I wouldn't say it's the best monster movie ever. It's a solid enough film. Uh, the the problem I have with that movie is I really like the scenes just in the goddamn like coffee room with the two dudes just fucking sending the monsters out. I did, uh, the the parts of that movie that don't work for me is when we're just doing the standard you know teens in a cabin. I know for why it's that's an stuff. homage. Yeah, it's an homage. But I was just like you know honestly I would prefer if this movie was just about these two fucking dudes. Uh, dudes working at this bureau where they send monsters out. Because the be the best part of that movie is the bit where um where uh, where they're where they're just screaming at the thing of the Japanese girl sending the uh, the Samara knockoff through pr uh, uh, prayer and friendship, and they're just like fuck you, fuck you. You know that stuff. If the movie did more stuff like that, I think I would like the movie a lot more. As is, it's okay and has some cool ideas in it, but overall, it just gets drugged down by n uh, trying to be a lot more original than I think. Like, it thinks it's a lot more original than it is because we've seen the stuff, uh, parodies like that done way before it, and I'd say way better than it. Yeah. That's it's a solid true. enough film, but I would definitely not say it's the best monster movie ever. Yeah, I don't hate it. It's just I've never gotten why that. But, you know, different story for different folks. Yeah. Like I said, I can guarantee you guys, I doubt there's any other massive Slinkwalker fans out there. So what do I know? Favorite classic Universal monster? I get, well, you guys, I kind of gave my way. I, I do love Dracula a lot, but I'm going to have to go again with the Wolfman. Um, I've always just, there's something about the Wolfman. And I guess because it's a very tragic story, because the Wolfman is not particularly evil. He just can't help it. I mm. mean, once the moon comes up, he does horrible things, and then he comes back, and it's not him. And I, I like that. I, I, I always like, have you ever noticed, I sort of always yeah. like tragedy. Yeah. Yeah, that's always appealed to me. And and, and again, and it could be just the fact that American Werewolf in London was more of my first horror movie, so that probably has something to do. I fucking love moons, I fucking love wolves, so, but yeah, it's it's no time. I love all the universal monsters, but the fucking Wolfman is like, the Wolfman rules. Yeah, and here's one of like, a lo the only other one along with Frankenstein that actually has a character arc throughout the other movies, because most of the other ones, like, Mummy is just, you know, nothing and isn't even the same mummy for most of the movies. Dracula's only in the one film. And the creature kind of has one too, but he's a fish guy that doesn't talk, so, yeah. you know, what can you shape do? Shape of Water. Yeah, yeah, Shape of Water was the most development uh, the fucking creature from the Black Lagoon ever got. Beautiful movie. Great movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'd agree with you with Wolfman, yeah. Yeah. Or a close, uh, close second would be Invisible Man, just because I love how much of an asshole he is for most of that movie. Yeah, the, I know a lot of people forget about the Invisible Man. Really good movie. Yeah, but I still, for me, it's just the Wolfman. Wolfman's got nards, if you know what I mean. What do you think is a very underrated monster movie? Uh, Basket Case. Basket Case I fucking is really good. love Basket Case. I have Basket Case 3 poster on my wall, front and center. Yeah. It's not the best one of the bunch, but I Even Hannah Lauder acknowledges that movie was a mistake. Oh, I love the movie, but, like, I love the whole Basket Case trilogy. I mean, the, the whole series. I love the whole the whole goddamn thing. Um, The first one, though, is just a fucking classic. It is a classic. It's just a fucking classic. And, um, again, you got kind of a really meaty story because it's about a brother's keeper. You know, mm -hmm. he's being his brother's keeper, and there's so much to do, and that, that movie couldn't have been made except in the time it was made. Oh, Oh, absolutely! Like that. That's why I always, like. That's why I like. If we ever did a top ten direct or favorite directors thing, like Hen and Lauder would be in my top three. Like mine too. Uh, yeah, like because I love Hen and Lauder because he much like he's kind of like the big horror and like John Waters of like 
Fuck it, who needs film permits? We'll just do it in one take and make sure that takes real good. So what if some of my actors might go to prison for indecent exposure on the streets of New York? Let's hire hookers to be most of our side characters. Which fuck is it. brilliant, by Yeah, the way. fuck it, let's just do it, you and, know? Uh, I also have to mention, you said this really doesn't classify as a monster, but I love the goddamn movie so much. Castle Freak! Yeah, he's not really a monster, he's just got a, a guy with a melted dick, so you know. But I like Castle Freak, I, I do. I don't know if that would mean... But count because it's basically a human with a floppy dick like you say mm -hmm. but you know I like it I had to mention Castle Freak what about you uh, keeping on the Henenlotter train my favorite Henenlotter movie is Brain Damage which Trenchy also mentioned is the one for underrated and I can't argue with him Brain Damage is great Brain right. Damage how can you not love a movie where fucking Zatcherly plays a ancient Egyptian worm god that attaches to its host's brain stem and gives and is all one giant metaphor for LSD. How can you not love that movie? Plus, it's uh, plus it, uh, it does have a connection to Basket Case. It's the only time he ever that they he kind of connected the movies together because you see the train scene. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. I, I love Brain Damage. Brain Damage is so good. Awesome. What's the next question? Let's see. What's your favorite creature from mythology or folklore, and does it have a movie? And if so, do, what do you think of the movie? Uh, the Golem. The golem is, is is what I would say for my. I'm not too much. This isn't really my area of the mytho, myth, mythological creatures and things. That's more your area, mm. Sparky. But yeah, the golem would count, yeah, right? Yeah, golem and, counts. And yes, it does have a movie. Of course, we all know the one that didn't get burned up, the mm. black and white. Yeah, one. like the one we have left from like the twenty of the of those movies. Yes, and I love that one. A great, a great piece of filmmaking. The, the um, what they did at that time period. It's like amazing mm. what they did with it, and it's also a pretty fucking uh, brutal story. But we also got one from, I believe, this year yep. in January that I think, I don't, I hadn't heard anyone else talk about it, and I think it's a fucking shame. It's just called The Golem, and man, I really dug that movie. Christian, you thought it, it was, was solid, okay. It was okay. But I thought that was a brilliant piece of filmmaking. I really did, and I, it's a shame more people have not seen that because it is fucking phenomenal. And it's just, a, and again, it's dealing with tragedy. It's dealing with grief. And I always find those make sometimes the be best monsters when it's not completely evil. It's not black and white. The best monsters are always there's a shade of gray, and it's 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 about child loss, and you know you're not thinking, and kind of it's kind of in a weird way. Uh, there's a connection to Pet Cemetery, if you get kind what I of, mean. Yeah. There's like that kind of same thing because they're doing they're trying to do the things with the best intentions, and because of that, the road to hell is paved with the best intentions, and it's the same thing. And I really like that. There's a, it's a very meaty kind of a kind of a story, and very it's really so, good. Yeah. It is on Netflix. Check it out, people. It is fucking phenomenal. Uh, God, I every see like every fucking video that isn't just a movie review. I seem like I mention I have to mention this lately, but uh, Skinwalkers. I love Skinwalkers. I fir this is we'll I'll talk more about this later, but I firmly believe in the existence of Skinwalkers. I've had several encounters, at least for my own beliefs. I have. Uh, there is weirdly not as many Skinwalker movies as you would think. There's only about four of them. There's there's Skinwalker Ranch, which is a found footage movie that's okay, but if you want. Uh, a more accurate portrayal of the actual Skinwalker Ranch incidents. Uh, there's a movie called Hunt for the Skinwalker. It's a documentary that goes way more into it. There's a movie called Skinwalker Curse of the Shaman that is amazingly terrible. Like, if you want a new equivalent of, like, a Troll 2 or just, like, so bad it's good, watch that movie. It's on YouTube. It is gloriously terrible. Some of the worst acting I have ever seen in a movie. Uh, there is also this movie called just Skinwalker that's actually pretty good. It's a kind of, if you're a big fan of like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, this kind of plays out like a full uh, movie length episode of that. And then there's also the best one, but also one that is impossible to track, uh, track down. The only reason I know about it is because I have a bootleg of it, again, just called Skinwalker, that was a made-for-PBS movie in the 90s. And it's actually really good. It's directed by the dude who did Pow Wow Highway. Oh, I if, love if Pow Wow you know, Highway. If you know Native American filmmaking, uh, that guy is very prolific. He, he made this for PBS, and it's a really, really excellent film. A little bit not less of a creep monster movie, and just more of a uh, looking in the mythology and character study, but it's a really Really interesting film and really worth checking out if you can track down a copy, which is almost impossible now. I, I like Skinwalker movies, if is what I'm saying. The very few there are. He does. What what monster do you think should be used in more movies? He goes. Ah, cool. Yeah, because you know.
I like Wendigos. Wendigos are cool. Wendigos are very cool. Again, going with the cool Navajo um, thing. Yeah, you wrote, mine is like the, of course you have like Larry Fassenden's Wendigo. That's which is, the one I was thinking. Which is gr a great fucking movie. We're big fans of Larry I love Larry too. Fassenden. Yeah, yeah, no, Wendigos you would think like with how, like you'll have stuff mentioning them and you, there are underlying like, of course, Pet Cemetery, at mm -hmm. least in the book and a little bit of the remake you have. Not um, elements of the Wendigo in there, but even then, that was less more of a spirit than just an actual Wendigo. We still have never had a full-on, just full-blown actual Wendigo movie. You're kind of right. No, but I think we should use it more. I think it's definitely something that's uh, neat. You could do a lot. It's again another. It's like the Golem. There, you could do so many different types of stories that absolutely. really could work. Oh, absolutely. You can do um, one actually really good uh, version of Wendigo. I always thought would be uh, make a, make a good gr ground for uh, setting it up for a movie is. A Anybody who remembers the show Lost Tapes, it was for Animal Planet, found footage, I've talked about this before. They did a really good Wendigo, grounded, like, realistic portrayal of a Wendigo episode called Wendigo the American Cannibal that was less, like, supernatural and just more guy goes crazy and starts eating his friends in the woods. That was a really good episode and real, kind of a cool way to more grounded look at a Wendigo that I haven't seen done before other than that. Cool. What about for you? Uh, well, like I said, there's only four Skinwalker movies, so I'll be down for some more Skinwalker <laughs> movies. Um, but I always thought the Gorgon or Medusa would be a really cool one to do. And I, as, to, as far as I know, like, I know there's a few that have used it and um, stuff, but I don't think we've ever gotten a dedicated movie about the Gorgon that I think would be, like, cool. You could do, if you said it, like, in the modern day, you could make it, like, about this fashion model or something that everyone uh, thinks is beautiful, but she thinks is hideous, because, you know, and all that. You could do some real cool, like, talking about, like, women's uh, role in the world stuff with, uh, with a Gorgon movie. Yeah, you Because really, right. that's the best way to do a monster movie, is they're always great, sa um, you know, bits of, uh, bits of looking at society through creatures. They are. That's a good way to put it. What's the next question? Uh, What's the most unique monster you've ever seen in a monster movie? Critters. Gee. I fucking love... Where's my... F Excuse me, guys. I'll be right. Just gonna get something. And they're so fucking cute. Oh, there you are. My little baby. <laughs> little baby. I Fuck. thought you were gonna get the popple, honestly. <laughs> it's fucking Critters. I love my little critter. He's just so cute. He's like a fat furry hedgehog that's evil with his little eyes. Yeah, yeah. I fucking love him. The show on Shudder was amazing. The show, the movie. Yeah, yeah the movie. But the show. show is fucking fun. Yeah. I fucking love Critters. Just look at him. I mean, how, how can anyone not think this is the most adorable thing? If I could find this in a stuffed animal, uh, stuffed animal, I would sleep with it. How has there never been like a stuffed animal critters doll? That'd be it. I'm sure there are. But or at least like a fan made popple or something. Yeah, but it's just so Somebody cute. Somebody get on that. It's like a teddy bear, but cuter and evil. And then they're they're just little. They're just so cute. I love critters. They are kind of, and they are very unique. But like, no, they are very unique. Like, yeah, you had stuff like, um, like goddamn munchies and ghoulies that kind of knocked off. But even then, the critters are just kind of unique. as all of their, all to their own. And they're cute. They're just fucking adorable. You know, some people have, you know, um, what's a cute thing that pe most people like? It's this cat, the kids. I don't know. They're, they're, these are just. I love these things. They're just. They, you know those those precious moments. You know some people. These are like my precious moments. They need to make more. Of the, they need to make uh, critters and precious moments for them. That would be fucking badass. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. They're just so cute. I, I love them. You go back on your home, Bubby. Uh, going back, uh, for me, I would say, going back to Brain Damage, I would say Abner from Brain Damage. Because, again, he is a giant blue worm thing that's a metaphor for LSD that's an ancient Egyptian god voiced by fucking Zachary. Enough said, it's just kind of awesome. It really is. What's your favorite monster from a non-horror film? Skepsies! The Dark Crystal. I fucking love. Like even as a kid, it wasn't the it wasn't the Geldings that I liked. It was the fucking Skeksis. The fucking Skeksis are fucking hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it as good as that. I I love that. Chamberlain was fucking awesome because he basically was a Judas trying to just save his own ass and fuck everybody over. That was fucking hardcore. I fucking love the Skeksis.
We need to finish the show. We do. It's it's just awesome. You don't like this. No, I like the Dark Crystal. I'm more of a Labyrinth guy, but I do love Dark Crystal, and Skeksis are the highlight. They are the awesome. They're just evil, and I dig them. They're just... <laughs> Challenge! <laughs> Uh, for me, you can argue if this is a kid's movie, but fuck it, people took their kids to it, so that was a what, what, and it's a fucking PG movie. Gremlins, a.k.a. Mogwai. Okay, uh, I, I, I'm Especially from 2. I don't know, Gremlins, Mm -hmm. I like to, but I, the first one, I, it's fine. Especially from two, cause you got all the weird, cool des uh, designs and stuff. But no, I just, I love, I love, I love Gremlins. They're kind of, they're they were basically critters before critters, cause critters was aping off Gremlins. But yeah, I love, I love Mogwai, and really cool way of adding in Chinese folklore. Yeah, that is, that is cool. I like it. I've always. Like too, I've never been a big Gremlins fan. Oh no, I, I love both movies, but honestly, nowadays my heart does kind of lean a little bit more towards Gremlins Two over Gremlins One. Both are great movies, but I love Gremlins Two. Gremlins Two is so much fun. Yeah, it is cool. What's the next? Fucking Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Do you believe in cryptids, and if so, what ones? A grain of salt. It's not that I don't like, because I, I do believe that the, it's possible that there are supernatural occurrences and ghosts and stuff. So I'd be kind of a fucking hypocrite if I said, oh, but but the Loch Ness monster and bulls and Bigfoot are fucking bullshit. That would be kind well, of. Well, technically, the Loch Ness monster is bullshit because DNA testing proved recently that it was most likely just an eel or something. Oh, well, I know, but like I, but I do believe, like I do, I, I do, I've never had anything except for that one thing that I talked about in the uh, previous video. I've never had a supernatural experience myself, but I do believe it's possible and that they're out there and that maybe some people have had them. And as for Bigfoot and stuff, it, it, it's a very, it's like a half a grain of salt. It's not even a complete grain of salt, but I won't discontinue it. I'm not real. The boy's way more interested in this than I am. Mm -hmm. I've never been really a bit big on the Bigfoots and stuff. You know, you know the only thing that, that came out of good about the Bigfoots is the porn. They made a lot of Bigfoot porn. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, if anyone in the comments wants to know some good Bigfoot porn, I, 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 write in the comments and I'll recommend a few. That's the only thing that's really... There you really, go. <laughs> that's the only thing that's really... Uh, the, the, the Bigfoots and all that kind of stuff never really did it for me. <laughs> Except for the porn. <laughs> And, and it's more funny. It's not like, it's just more funny. It's like the Spongebob porn, you know? And the, and the Beavis and Butthead, which was just bad. As we've said many <laughs> times, the original idea was this channel where she was just going to review weird-ass porns. We decided It's no, more. none of them are let my puppets come kind of levels. But you know, you know, what is? I fucking love let my puppets come. <laughs> Anyway, on to me, uh, well, like I said, I firmly believe in skinwalkers. Story for another day, because it's a long thing, but I've had possibly several encounters with them. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, other stuff, uh, Wendigos, basically anything, like, I, I we, for, I mean, it's because, you know, we're part native, but I, a lot of the Navajo stuff I can t I totally see, or at least understand where some of the stuff that was coming from. Like, deer, if you ever got a chance, look, want an intro, want a weird-ass one, look up deer women. There, it's a real interesting bit of Navajo folklore. It is. Um, but for other stuff, like Bigfoot, you know, I don't. Do you believe, because you watch every Bigfoot movie that ever comes out. Bigfoot movies, but like after actual stuff, you know, I, yeah, I could I could believe it because it is weird that every single culture, kind of like from like Tibet to China to Australia, all have their own weird version of Bigfoot that all basically are the same. Uh, that is interesting and stuff, and I'm sure, and I'm sure like. Uh, well, DNA testing is getting to the point where you probably can scan an area and just see. Actually, you can because that's what happened with Lock Next. So I'm pretty sure probably by the uh, probably by the end of my generation, we'll probably know if there is a Bigfoot. But uh, right now, grain of salt. Uh, other stuff like um, blue hole octopuses. That's not really much of a cryptid, but if you ever get a chance, like weird, uh, uh, look up stuff with the blue holes and all the disappearances. I kind of do believe in blue hole octopuses because that kind of does make sense and possibly an explanation for what the Kraken and all that stuff came from. Cryptid stuff is, I find interesting. I'm not like an avid, like, oh, dude, I believe in this, this, and this. But, you know, grain of salt, if I, if you show me hardcore evidence of it, okay, if you say you had an encounter, I'll believe you enough because, again, I say I have encounters with skinwalkers. So what can you do? Yeah. Cool. What's the next question? Uh, okay, last two. What's your favorite era of monster films? Um, you know, they're all good. Uh, probably 60s and 70s, although the earlier ones... 
ones are really cool. But seventies had some really so fun. That, I mean, so bad they're fun. Oh yeah, yeah. like like sixties. You had like Wasp Woman, which is a personal favorite I of ours. I fucking love. And the, the story behind Wasp Woman is more than the movie is. Like there, I should do a review. You really need. To, I I've always thought Wasp Woman would make a great video because the story behind that movie is fascinating. It is. She basically turned into her character. She literally she did. did. She really did. It's a fascinating thing, and she got murdered by her own son. So yeah. yeah there's a story there. But yeah, though, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, was them in the 60s, the giant ant movie? I think I, that was in the 60s or late 50s. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, 70s and 80s and that stuff had, and 60s had some real cool stuff. They did. Yeah, the, yeah they had the Empire of the Ants. Empire, Empire of the Ants, Kingdom yeah. of the Spiders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there ever any giant snake movies? Um, you had Food of the Gods, which was just kind of a giant animals in general movie that I think had a scene of a snake. But I don't think until Anaconda you had a full blown like giant snake movie. Unless I was you count, to think. unless you count like stuff like like Reptilicus or um, God damn it, the Harryhausen movie about the sea serpent. But oh um, yeah, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, like you have those, but the, but nothing like actual snake wise. I don't think until Anaconda. Yeah, I just wonder. Uh, what about you? Ah, uh, gotta got go with eighties because you have the thing, you have the blob, you have the fucking fly. All of those are great. Ew. All of those are great ass remakes. Uh, yeah, yeah, just have so many great, great monster movies from the eighties. Yeah, because that that was kind of the prime area of monster movies because you had kids who grew up watching monster movies like John Carper and David Cronenberg making their own monster movies, but with eighties effects and budgets and just and great actors and everything. So you had a lot of really cool movies then. Yeah, I guess every era has gems though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, like fifties, you got classic Harryhausen and stuff, which is you know, gotta love the beautiful stop motion there. Thirties, you had in the early Godzilla movies. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, cool. Last question. You have if you have to choose one of these creatures and the other five will come and try to kill you and the if what the one creature you picked will defend you. Cool. Graboid from Tremors, Pumpkinhead, a hundred gremlins, the predator, the original Frankenstein from the Universal, or John Carpenter's The Thing. Which Pumpkin do you head. choose? Pumpkin why, head. why pumpkin head? Because pu you don't fuck with pumpkin head. Ask Lance Hendrickson. You don't fucking fuck with pumpkin head. That movie, not so much the sequels. I'm talking about pumpkin head from the first mm -hmm. one. Um, you you just because it's yourself. It's again, I touching back on the earlier thing about man and everything. It's basically you become the monster, and mm -hmm. what is worse than your own monster? I mean, no one can create. You know, you can be your own worst monster, your own worst enemy. There's just so much there. So fucking pumpkin head. Cool. But not so much the sequels. <laughs> what about you? Uh, well, see, I see. I'm sitting here thinking, like, which one would be the? It comes down to either choosing Pumpkinhead or the Predator. Pumpkinhead because technically he's indestructible unless you kill the person that he's attached to. I guess I don't know if that means you have to go and kill Lance Hendrickson. No. Or if you have to kill the me who's theoretically picking this and which makes but me Lance attached Hendrickson to Pumpkinhead. Came back. Well, yeah, I and know. He didn't die. Well, well, no, he died. He's just a ghost in the sequels. Um, but or the predator because the predator can kill most things. I but don't uh, like the but predator. I'm probably gonna lean because other one everything else like grab boy just just have to get on a big rock. Gremlins are pretty easy to dispatch. The Frankenstein monster is durable but slow as shit. John Carpenter's the thing. His only real big power is being able to mask and be somebody else. But if you if you already know, okay. Oh no, there's a hundred and one gremlins. I guess one of those is the thing now. You know, so it's pretty easy to turn there. So I would uh, uh, probably the predator. I would say. I get that. Pro Why? Most deadly, like most deadly, like I'm thinking. You yeah, don't fuck with the pumpkin head. Well, yeah, but the but with pumpkin head, all you have to do is just find and kill Lance Hendrickson. No, no, we don't kill Lance Hendrickson. Should be a national treasure. Well, yes, he was in the war. Well, yeah, but yeah, I I go with the predator personally. Okay, I get that. Is there any more questions? That's all the questions. That was this was a fun tag. It made me had to use my whole brain thing. And yeah. Um, thank you so much, Trenchy, for tagging us. You made uh, you made an awesome tag. These were very fun questions. These were questions we've never had to think about no, or ask no. before. So Vera, you did a you did a phenomenal tag. Thank you so much for tagging us. I guess this is a part where we have to tag people. Yeah. I tag Ben from the Cladaver Club. I'd love to hear his answers. Yeah, I would too, especially because uh, I'll make up a Godzilla. 
Fanny is. Yeah, I'm going to tag Adam Paul Beaumont. I'm going to tag... You tag some people for... Oh, Sean Patrick Erston. I cannot wait to hear Sean's answer. Yeah, I actually would be very interested. Yeah, definitely Sean. Definitely, definitely do this one. Um... Hobbs. Yeah. Oh, and Hobbs Horror. Hobbs Horror would yeah. be an awesome. I'd really like to hear your answers, guys. And anybody else who wants to play, feel free to play. This is open to everybody. These are just people that are in my brain right now. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of. Oh, are we still filming? Yes. Oh, um, you saw nothing. Ooh. Ignore the woman sitting on the in couch. front of the camera. Okay, and with all that was the first time we've ever incorporated a Wizard of Oz reference. I played the. This is probably going to surprise no one. I played the Wicked Witch in high school. Um, so with all that out of the way, booze and ghouls. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again, Trenchy, for tagging us again. The tag is open to anybody who wants to play. And um, if you do happen to like other contents of this channel, please hit that subscriber button because we appreciate appreciate every single uh, person who watches and hits that subscribe button and if uh we'll we'll talk to you real soon